Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Welcome to Rejuvi 45. If you're here, you probably saw this phrase called modern leadership, and you learned that Rejuvi 45 is the community um, that brings modern leadership and makes it um, actionable for leadership practitioners throughout the globe. So we're so glad that you're here, either watching our session live, watching our recordings, or watching our reels, because bringing modern leadership um, to the world now that the future of work has arrived is so, so important. Um, my name is Regina, Regina Hepp, and I'm really glad to be here today. And today I'm joined by Mel McCarthy and Nicole Calderon. And and uh, and, and uh, Nicole and I are joined by Mel McCarthy. Okay, the, I I have to start out this session um, at, with a little bit of oh, Nicole. I have never said your name Calderon. I have always said it um, Calderon. It is Calderon. Yeah, yeah I say uh, yeah. I pronounce it Calderon, but I mean, I you know. Usually people just call me Nicole, so it's not a problem at all. So uh, yeah. it, it's amazing. It's amazing. It's a, it's just, it's just a, but the, those little things are important, and it's just surprising. We've been, we've been talking and working together so much over mm -hmm. the course of the past, um, you know, uh, several months that it's surprising that I've actually never heard you say your last name before. Assumptions. Well, don't worry. I I often get corrected on my own last name, so you know it's okay. Yeah. It's yeah. funny. Um, Mel, how's it going today? Uh, today it's going pretty fantastic. Thanks for asking. Mm -hmm. Life is good. Mm -hmm. Life, life is very good. So, um, for those of you who are watching this, you notice that, um, the session today is called control and you'll see, um, with it, this, this fantastic picture of a rowing team right? And there's probably a coxswain sitting maybe right about, right about here um, that's associated with it. And it's a special session for us because uh, the session control kicks off a series of Rejuvi 45 sessions that is um, all about knowing whether or not your leadership movement is sticking. Um, and so it's about things like measurement and trying to understand measurement and impact um, in a more modern a modern way. So um, it's a, it's an, like I said, it's a very important session for us. Now, um, we decided instead of talking about measurement and new models for measurement, which we're going to get to a lot in this series, we thought it would be really fun to bring um, to everyone two business leaders who themselves are going through um, um, and under learning, building their knowledge of what modern leadership is, and really starting to think about how modern leadership um, is influencing their worlds and the things that they lead each and every day. So we're doing this thing. We we decided to call it a living journal. And this is going to be our opportunity to bring these business leaders, these business women, to Rejuvi 45 a couple of times over the next several quarters and um, learn about how they're doing with their modern leadership movements and what they're learning about the impact that these leadership movements are creating for themselves for um, the people that surround them each and every day and for the organizations that they care deeply about. So that's what we're gonna, that's what we're gonna do today, right? <laughs> so I'm excited. I'm I'm just I'm really excited about this. The three of us have had fantastic sessions in the past as a group, as a small group, you know, and in different sets of two. So I can't wait to see what this, uh, what this, how this is gonna unfold. And this live journaling for everyone that's listening in today, the three questions that we're going to be continually focused on through multiple sessions is watching these two business leaders and number one, how they talk about what they know about their own leadership journeys. Number two, um, what they're learning about modern leadership. And then number three, how modern leadership is influencing all of the things that are important to them. 
So, um, so with that, um, let the, let the, let the free for all begin, right? I don't know how are you guys, how, how are you? I'm asking you guys some big questions. You know what they are, but how does it, how does how are you guys feeling? Well, clearly we're both excited, right? Cause I was like, I'm Nicole. So, you know, I like jumped right in over mouse. So it's like just super excited to talk about something that I'm deeply passionate about. Um, and it's just, um, it's been a, for those of those people watching, right, that love to like self-reflect and to challenge themselves. I think it's just this really broadening of your aperture that's almost um, just really enjoyable. Yeah. Mel? Um, so, I, you know, I, uh, I've always had this um, motto of like, you're never done cooking, right? You're, you're never done growing, whatever the case may be. And um, there've been a lot of interesting, I'd say pivots. Sometimes there've been little baby steps I've taken as a leader. Sometimes there've been whole leaps. And I, I have sometimes attempted to make it to the other shore and I'm just, you know, hanging on with like fingernail tips, but I've always, have always figured out and managed to claw my way forward and, and get to the next the next set of challenges, the next, you know, area of growth. And um, yeah, so I'm excited to just unpack and, and hear about Nicole's experience. You know, um, I just, we all learn from each other. So I always appreciate that. That's right. Okay. So, um, so let's, let's get started before we start talking about modern leadership, like let's start sharing with the audience a little bit about the business leaders that we actually have on, on, the, the the podcast today and so it doesn't matter who went, who who's going to go first but one of the things that we'd like to learn um, from each of you is a little bit about your own leadership journeys um tell tell us about that and how you see it so I'll jump in um <clears throat> so in a traditional definition of leadership I tend to always think to those those places or jobs in my life where I was accountable for other people. But the reality, the reality is, right, I didn't get some of those roles just because it's because I was already showing up somehow as a leader. And more times than not, it was because I was finding a, a way to get results or do something better or differently for the business. Right. And that's when you kind of get tapped on the shoulder and you get asked to go to the next level, that kind of a thing. Um, I was never, I was never necessarily interested in being promoted to anything very far up the ladder. I just always was really interested in meaningful work and challenging work and working with really good people. And then over time, I got really excited when I, I got to actually help other people grow in their journeys, right? Develop skills or do stuff that they didn't think they could do. And that always kind of lit me up to be like, wow, you know, I, I got to help play a role in helping you see how awesome you are. Um, and that, that is, that part has continued. I think, um, I think there's some really interesting learnings moving from how I would say I grew up in a command and control type of an environment and evolving to kind of a, a different geography, which I, I know we'll talk a little bit about here, um, in upcoming moments. But, um, for me, it's always been about never stop growing and, you know, just don't leave anything on the table. I don't want to look back on my life and be like, ah, I could have done more. You know, I could have contributed more. I could have learned more. I could have had different experiences. I could have helped other people have different experiences. Um, and so that's that's kind of how I, I think about broadly my leadership journey. Nicole, what about you? Oh. Yeah, yeah, actually, actually, and 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 I, you know, I think that we're just gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pose the, these three questions, but you know, um, once I pose them, I think we can just have just a little bit of conversation before we get mm -hmm. to Nicole's, um, how she thinks about her own leadership journey. I think that there are a couple of really interesting things there, that you know are are worth shouting out loud. I I love that you 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 answered the question. First, around, um, you know, the you know when you think about this from a traditional leadership perspective, mm -hmm. and some of the some of the richest conversations that you and I have had, Mel, are around how you see yourself as a builder, right? Mm -hmm. um, and you know, sometimes I use this phrase, and I, I'll call it, you know, a, a a builder girl, you know, you know, 
you know, a, a build a builder woman, but I call it a builder girl. And sometimes there are people who are very interested in and very motivated by not just solving a problem, but but solving in a problem that teaches um, an entire group of people, you know, how to how to fish, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's I think one of the things that I've learned about you. You're a builder girl, and and builder girls are fantastic business leaders and. I love how when you think about your own journey, you have learned that leadership is about these about building something. And it's not only about leading other people. I love that so much about what you're saying, Mel. And I love that so much about who you are. Thank you. Yeah. Nicole, I see you just nodding up and down um, with, with not only what Mel, how Mel sees her own journey. Um, but kind of some of the discussion we've had otherwise. Yeah, I think it's um, it's just really nice to have this like space to reflect, right? And, um, you know, leading people, right? Like when you first go into it, you're a manager um, and that's your title. And then when you think about what you're actually doing, it's it's wildly different, right? Like as you start to move this geography to modern leadership and um, much like, Mel, except I think I'm a fixer. I don't know if I'm a builder. I think I'm a, I think I'm your fixer girl. I think I'm the other side of your coin. <laughs> um, but I really, my career ended up um, leading me into a, to what was called as the project world, right? And um, not just trans transforming like people and how they grow, but also the tools they use. And in that role, when I think about what Mel was talking about, like leading um and not having people report to you that was a very different um leadership role to stretch into right like um influencing and um, helping others grow when when you don't write their performance reviews when they have no reason to um you know do what you're asking other than connecting them to the why um this is important for all of us and i feel like that's where a lot of my leadership skills really started to grow and to blossom um, there. Uh, and if I just think about how that's um, made me take steps back and reflect about how I become more, um, more impactful as a leader is probably the best way to say it. I think um, when I think about where I've been and where I have at first, I used to think like, I'm your leader. And, I'll do, you guys do whatever magic tricks you want to do or trapeze artists you want to be. And I will be this like support um, person and where I actually saw a change, right? Like as I grew in my leadership, when I started to help them connect to the context of what we were working on and outcomes, that was a really big change for me. And, um, you know, I, I wanted to, I, I love what Mel was saying about her um, you know, desire to, to help and make people better and grow. And if I reflect and I truly, you know, dive into this living journal, Reg, I, I don't want you to be disappointed, but I just wanted to make more money at first, right? Like how I wanted. And then once I got in it, I was like, oh my gosh, what happens when you actually help a human being grow and um, unlock their own potential is just, it's really moving. So um, you know, one is I appreciate your, you know, your candidness around we we all see we, you know, we we have our careers, we we have we have roles, we have jobs, and um everyone can identify with one of the reasons why you have a job, why you you take a role is because you, you know, you want to you want to take care of yourself, right? You want to take care of your your family, right? You need you need, you need, you need the, the income in, in order to, you know, in order to, 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 to live. Right. So I love, I love that, that I love that, that candidness. The other thing that I really love that you talk about is um, you may not be a, a builder girl. And I, I, I don't want to send any messages about using this word girl in a, you know, a, you're, you, you, you know, you're, you're in a, a non deep and broad kind of way, I say it with so much love and affection, right? 
but I love that you think of yourself as, you know, a, a fixer girl, you know, as a, as a, and I love what you've learned about um, being able to, to influence people to make a difference has nothing to do with whether or not people actually report directly to you. Do you know what I mean? I think that that is such a fantastic lesson from your leadership journey. Do you guys know what I mean? Mm -hmm. yeah. I chuckled okay. a little bit. I chuckled a little, little bit, Nicole, when you start talking about, you know, at first I just want to make money. I'm like, gosh, even there were a couple of steps along the way where I did a dumb thing and I took a job because the, because the money and like, it felt like, Ooh, this is a fancy, shiny, new, whatever. And that was a hundred percent always regrettable. Right. When I, I've, I've learned that twice. Mm -hmm. twice right yeah. more money does not equal more happiness more ability more, right sometimes it actually just is more problems and not the right ones that you're aligned to best fix or yeah. best build mm -hmm. uh, so those were important life lessons for me mm -hmm. and I think I also didn't know right I thought like in my simplified version of like my own personal journey where I thought well I can help make the environment better. If I can make the environment better for my team as a manager, then as a director of managers, I can make the environment better. And then as, as an executive director, I can make the environment better. And I always thought that it had to basically like command and control structure. I thought it had to come from the top down. Um, mm -hmm. And it wasn't really until I moved into that other world where it's like, oh no, you can influence wherever you're at. And it's mm -hmm. just, you broaden out. But I used to think that it was associated with the title right? And now, as we're being asked to step into modern leadership, it absolutely can't be that way, right? Um, for, for us to be successful, right? You know, when it, as, we, as we start to kind of shift from how um, you guys think about your leadership journeys, you know, and we're learning, we've got a builder girl, we've got a fixer girl kind of on the phone, but I'm also kind of hearing, I didn't really expect this to happen, but then in each of your journeys, you're finding that what motivated you, right? What made you feel good um, was the stickiness that you could create, the movement that you could create when you actually impacted not only people, but the environment. Like that's one of the things I'm hearing loud and clearly from both of you, and especially Nicole, as you're kind of summarizing some statements it's not just about influencing or impacting people, but it's changing the environment in which they work. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to have people just kind of hold that, that concept about what's bringing joy and what's bringing um, stickiness and what's bringing motivation to, to, um, to Mel and to Nicole. So, and I'm going to move on to the next question. Um, and in 2023, um, both of you were introduced to this phrase called modern leadership. And talk to us a little bit about, um, and maybe the phrase came to you different, different ways, you know, um, maybe you learned about it through someone else, or maybe you learned about it because you started reading some um, some uh, some social media kinds of content, but tell us a little bit about how how you responded to this or why you responded to this thing called modern leadership. I I can go first. Um, I didn't know what modern leadership was, right? Like what it what it was or what it was a call to action to do. Um, but I was actually introduced to the concept through the Rejuvi team, and um, it was done in this really beautiful way that's that's beautiful and also terrifying at the same time, right? It's a, it's a picture, right, of this empty bench on this beautiful platform looking over this, this horizon that has mountains and it has magical, you know, sunrises and... Um, and I just remember thinking, well, dang it, that bench is empty. <laughs> and why is it empty? And um, and then just as what we talked about, like what is needed at this point in time, right? For leaders to make a difference, it was um, it was just so eye-opening, right? Just how you could 
be there and look outward and um, see kind of like the gravity of what you were being called to do. Um, so I, I thought that was that was really impressive. I think previously I had heard it um, maybe some weird version, not a full throated version. I think sometimes I had heard it called like like maybe meta skills is is something else that ah. it kind of yeah. like um, how it kind of been shared, but it didn't have um, meta skills. It was kind of like a like it, it was it seemed like a short term thing right where modern leadership is like an evolution of your growth and um so i so i think that was much more impactful to me mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. um, we're gonna we're gonna i'm gonna have you we're gonna pause and let mel go but i want to um i want to some of the words that you're using these adjectives exciting terrifying weird you know i'm like this is this is, is something that we need to talk about but um, the weirdness and kind of meta skills is something I, I, I think is something that I want to talk about, about this geography called modern leadership. Mel, how, how did, tell us about your first entree to this phrase called modern leadership or what it espouses. Uh, so I think I, I, you know, I started following um, on social media probably last, late last summer. And what was standing out for me and I don't know specifically if it was a, a message or just a, a, you know something in the series or the tone, but <clears throat> it was around this idea that it acknowledged that leaders keep evolving and growing and that there's a methodical way to help you regardless of where you are, what type of leadership role you're playing in an organization, not title, but really really what you're you're being called to do, right, or called to lead. Um, that there is a way to focus on a few of the right things to help you become exceptional over time, and that there was a way to measure it. So it, was, it felt very hopeful to me. My background is more, um, has been historically, right, doing different types of assessments on leaders, coaching, looking at strengths-based tools, style-based tools, all good stuff to help build, build self-awareness. It's not that that's wrong. It's just, I've had too many experiences across all of my leader roles where I got put into a new situation and it's sort of like, well, these are the tools I came equipped with. I hope they work, right? Mm -hmm. Kind of a thing. And, um, you know, I'm also really thankful. I've had some amazing leaders in my in my journey where we really came together and learned almost, to, you know, as a team and as a cohort and we really worked forward to bring our, you know, our department or our divisions, you know, business to life. And those were the most powerful experiences because you really had, and I had, a, for me, it was just a privilege to work with some very strong women on a leadership team. Um, just that we could do this, you know, together and help influence together and all of those good things. Um, but, but anyway, I felt like we were leading in a modern way. The, the thing that we didn't have necessarily is, this new model, which would have given us like an even more powerful rhythm and it would have given us the data to actually show where we were, where I feel like we really were expanding our, our leadership. We just didn't have a good way to measure it. And I also think about the roles I've had as a, you know, the ability to influence and help guide organizations at the top levels. And I, I just wish this is something that we had had as a model to be able to, to present, right? We've tried so many other things, mm -hmm. cultural stuff. I've been on at least four culture teams in my career. Mm -hmm. it's not how you fix culture, yeah. but anyway. Well, that's a that's a that's, that's, those that's a that's a whole that's a whole another uh, fun conversation. You know, when I think about this phrase called modern leadership, and you know, right now I think Rajuvi calls it modern leadership. Um, I I I um, I don't. Maybe maybe that phrase will stick. Maybe you know, and, and maybe in, in a year or two years, you know, there's something that, um, that, that it changes to, but, um, what it espouses is I think a combination of your guys's answers to the two questions so far, right? Because what it espouses is, um, when you think about leadership, and you think about some of these words that you're using around exciting, you know, meta skills, model of hope. 
you're really talking about um, two different growth models, right? You're thinking about a growth model, you know, chunks of things coming together to create strength in a human being. And in addition, you are bringing together the growth model for an actual business, right? Um, think about some of the things that you guys talked about in the first question about what you learned about being a, um, you know, a builder or being a fixer. You learned the fundamentals of making um, an environment strong and as well as the fundamentals of making people strong. Modern leadership for me is, is really nothing more than saying maybe that horizon, that picture that Nicole was talking about, or what now, you know, Rajui is at this point in time calling modern leadership, isn't uh, only about being human centric, nor is it about being only business or outcome centric. It's about being living centric and paying attention to the things that you need to do in order to care for all of the stuff that needs to grow. Because if you can't grow the humans, in addition, if you can't grow the business, you're creating a situation that is not, um, you know, um, um, simpatico, if you would, if you, if you will, right? And, you know, the people aren't happy in the business or nor the business can't sustain itself to be, um, to continuing to be around so that it can employ the people in the business. Do you know what I mean? That is, that's, that's modern leadership. It's a living centric model and helping people who are either builders or fixers, right, to understand the meta skills in a hopeful way where um, every living thing can grow, you know, that's, that's, that's what modern leadership is. You know, um, when we first started talking about this, um, sometimes I felt like people were looking at me like, who's the Greek character that has the snakes coming out of her head? I think it's Medusa, right? I think, I think, right, right. I, think, I feel like when I was starting to talk about this, people were, you know, they would, they'd look at me like I you know, had, had these snakes coming out of my head. And someone once told me they had, they were just, they were reading the Medici effect and they just said, Reg, have you read this? And I, I had not at the time, but they shared this really powerful story with me. And they said that in that book, they started to talk about um, what an innovation actually was. And that the idea of an innovation was when previously unrelated domains were brought together to create something new, to create a new geography, to create a new um, uh, placemat where you know where where people could gather, communities could gather. And I and I love that so much because when you think about modern leadership, modern leadership because it is living centric only exists because, you know, there is a willingness to say, let's combine some domains here, right? Let's combine human or leader development and let's combine that with org or business development and let's throw in analytics, you know, um, advanced analytics so that we can start to understand, you know, um, how these things are growing, you know, over time, um, those domains have been combined to create something new. And, and so that to me is another way to also start to think about modern leadership as the combination of these domains. But the fact that it's a new domain means it's a new geography. Mm -hmm. And if you're a new geography, Everybody else is on this other is on this other on, the, on this other geography, and this process of getting from you know this other geography to this new geography, you can start to get to these words called exciting and and, and terrifying. <laughs> and so, right? So, can you guys can you guys identify with this a little bit? Mm -hmm. So, this is what what I'm reminded of is. Um, <clears throat> there's a, a gentleman, um, Dr. William Bridges, who 
who specializes in transitions and helping organizations through transitions. And so something that I used to teach and I have this visual in my head all of the time is you have this land or this geography you're leaving, right? This is the, the land of endings, right? You know that you've, you've got to get into the water. There's this big lake. And then there's this island over here, the new island, the new geography, the new beginnings. So going from the land of endings to this like neutral zone, I'm not sure I can make it. I'm not sure I want to go over there. That looks scary. Um, I see somebody else made it over there. I think they're a little crazy for navigating those waters. I'm not sure yet. Or you have some people who are like, I'm taking the jet. This is great. I'm just going, right? That's just all the, the type of change and transition. We all go through that. Um, but that's what this reminds me of. It's so hard, I think, once you have been steeped in a career, you've been steeped in all these experiences, you've been, in essence, programmed a certain way in how you became the person leader you are, um, to understand that there's now a new shore, right? It's not just like, oh, I'm just taking a little step on a ladder. I'm not just working on a lattice. I have to actually like go through this uncomfortable space and unlearn and leave some things behind so I can get to this new land and I know it's a better place and I, I will figure it out and I'll figure out how to navigate it. But it's that, it's that transition that can be tricky. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And some days I'm not going to lie. You want to, you just want to go back to where it's comfortable. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's the visual for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think, um, I think what has always been scary, right. Whether it was early on in my career um, up until kind of having the, these two domains come together in this like this new geography, I think it was always scary because I didn't know how to get there, right? Like to your point, Mel was like, "Yeah, go to that other island," but like how? Like by boat? Like is that is that how we're gonna do this? Um, so I think that was always the thing. Like if I think about where I have, you know, kind of moved personally, like in my career and like learning. I think that was always the hardest part, right? Like getting feedback about trying to go to a, to a new spot, but um, but nobody could tell you how to get there. Mm -hmm. right? But just get there because it's going to be important. And so I just you really over there. Just just yeah. go do it. Don't you yeah, know? Just I mean, other people are doing it. I mean, um, and well, uh, I, I yes, I do know, and I think that this is why we wanted to do this living journal with two business leaders who are um, in in transition right from one geography to to the other to be encouraging of mm -hmm. so many others who are trying to figure out do do I take a boat should I take a boat do I take an right. airplane do I literally get into the water and start swimming like just exactly how should I do this so let me let me ask you this this wasn't necessarily planned but I think it'll be really kind of a fun impromptu question but um what's since you have since you you know you you we're talking very experienced leaders right it's not as though um either one of you haven't earned you know the gray hair that you have you have earned your gray hair you have decades worth of experience and decades worth of success to take a look at so as you are in your the process of swimming to taking a boat to, you know, jetting over to this new geography, share with the audience what's the worst thing that's happened so far because you decided to swim, boat, or fly over to this just geography. What's the worst thing that's happened? You know, it. I mean, really nothing, right? I would say if I was being nitpicky, right, with myself, it was, I just have to explain a few more words, right? Like, I feel like I have a few new words in my vocabulary that I, that mean something very special to me, right? Like, if I think about um, leading past from intent to intelligence and then to target, those are all parts of, um, you know, being a fair spirit business leader in this new geography. And I say them like everyone should know them. So I think that's the only thing is, um, and it, you know, it, since you're making me reflect, it hasn't been too scary. It's just a few more, just investing a little bit more in the conversation mm -hmm. so they can follow what I'm actually trying to help them learn by modeling. That's um, awesome. And, and I'm, I'm taking that in. I'm like, okay, that's, that's not so bad, right? Yeah. It's, it's not so bad. It may not be 
Maybe it's not, you know, 95 degree water, but maybe it's 70 degree water. Like it's a little chilly. Right. Okay, I can yeah. handle this. Mel, what's the worst thing that's happened to you um, since you are in transition to becoming or and are now serving as a modern leadership practitioner? I don't know if there's a worst thing. I think um, I'm encouraged that because I did decide to jump in the water, right, and head to the new land. Hopefully that means that I'm a, I'm a better translator for all the people who are still on the, the land of endings. They, some of them don't know it's a land of endings yet, frankly, right? Like that that style of leadership, that, that doesn't work anymore. We, we all have to actually get over here if we wanna write our businesses to survive and keep people employed. Mm -hmm. um, so I think I, I think I am just hopeful that I can help continue like, the lighthouse is over here, right? And we'll we'll explain everything, and we'll continue to help help make sure your boat stays afloat and all of those good things. Um, so I think I'm encouraged. I I find myself I will still slip back sometimes to old ways of thinking. I will still slip back to thinking about. Um, sometimes I just get focused on results, and I I forget the people side. Or sometimes I just focus on the people side, and I forget oh I'm supposed to be thinking up here. Um, but it'll come together. I'm, and I, you know, I, I'm, I'm very confident. I'm, 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 I'm way past just having my fingers, <laughs> fingers and hanging on by a deer thread. I'm nowhere near that. I'm, I'm firmly on the new, new Island. And, um, I'm trying to help bring other people there. What's, um, um, thank you for, thank you, uh, both of you for, you know, kind of meandering through this, this unplanned question about what's the worst thing that's happened. But I also want to give you a chance to tell everyone, um, because you guys are in the water or on the, a new island, what's the coolest thing that's happened? What's one of the coolest things that's happened since you since you started to make the, the transition? I think um, there's quite a few. Sorry. Of course. Um, there's quite a few, but if I had to pick the coolest is just really um, having a way to grow um, that, for me, right, just having a way to grow that I feel in control of. Um, that has just been something super powerful. And so as I learn it myself, I'm able to turn around and share that with others. And so being able to give back in that way is super meaningful because um, I'm sure like many of us on this call, there are people that we, that rely on us throughout our careers. So even though we don't work together anymore, they still reach out to you for support and for help and for counsel. And it's just amazing to um, be able to give back to them in, in that way. Um, mm -hmm because it was always something that I personally looked like yearned for is like how to, how to go forward mm -hmm. in a meaningful way. Mm -hmm. I think to have that, it, it feels like I get to share some secret sauce, right? Mm -hmm. um, what's, the coolest, what's one of the coolest or some of the coolest things that um, um, have happened? Yes, in it's a sum. Um, so I think, I think what I like in particular about the model and Nicole alluded to this, right? Is that mm, there is a set of, things and behaviors and practices that if I do those things really well, I'm growing in the right direction. I don't have to read 83 books and try to figure out how all these things fit together, right? All of, all of those things. Um, the other thing I thought about is how, you, you know, Nicole, you kind of talked about and then to within my control. And I think it's a really interesting, you just made me think about the old world, right? Was about command and control. And part of that was, so you felt in control by right. command and top down. This is a different mode of control because it's measurable, it's living, and you own it. You own whether you're expanding or contracting and you can tell, right? And the people around you can tell. And and, and the way that we gather that through our the data collection, um, you, you you have kind of that that thermometer um, mm -hmm. that you just, you just didn't have before, right? You, you get feedback and only like one little piece of yourself and like, cool. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I don't know how to do the rest of my job, but yeah. So, so I think that's, that's one piece. Um, I, I just, I am so thrilled to be part of something that's 
literally going to change the environment of all these workplaces. It's going to make the business better, which means it, and it's making the people better and makes our communities better. It's, it's all of those things. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm a builder girl. So, you know, I got new tools. I got new tools now. <laughs> so, um, but uh, there's so many things we have to have a whole different podcast for that. So. Well, we do, but this is, this is, I, I absolutely love this because it, it, this is why we're going to do this living journal of two uh, business leaders, experience, deeply experienced business leaders going through the process of becoming modern leadership practitioners and being able to help many um, around, uh, around them. And so we want this to be encouraging, encouraging of others. Just a couple of things that I think are just really, really fun. I think that you know, Nicole, as I've watched you over the past several months learn about modern leadership, some of the funnest things that literally have come out of your mouth, right? Is I, I, I and, and Mel was there for some of this, some for, for this, but I remember you at one point learning about the, the, the new modeling and, um, and saying, oh my gosh, like, you guys have cracked the code on growth, you know, and that was just so, that was just so complimentary and hopeful for complimentary of the work that Juby has done, but also so encouraging and hopeful about how it can prov provide guidance to other people, because that was your, one of your initial reactions to it. But yeah. then, you know, as you continue to learn more and go through, for example, the certification process, you said something very different, which was to me was this, this, oh, okay, I have a crush on these words now, right? Because it was not just, you said something like, I don't know what to like more. The fact that this has cracked the code on how to think about growth for people and for a business, or the fact that it's made it doable. It gives you the building blocks to actually create those movements wherever you choose to create them. What a compliment, like what an aha that actually was. Do you remember seeing that? Yeah, I do. Um, Cause I think a lot about it, right? Um, as leaders, right? You, and even for individuals, usually your development is in your own hands, right? Like you hear phrases like, nobody cares about your development more than you do. Nobody. Um, but how do you get help with your development, right? Mm -hmm. And um, through, like, my experience, I've had people say things like, work on your executive presence, work on, you know, just, like, I don't want to say arbitrary things, right? Like, they mean something, right? Um, but that was it, right? Like, work on your executive presence. Well, how... How would I do that? Right, where do I go? One of the swear word to me, just so you know, those are swear words. Yeah. That whole that mm -hmm. I, I, yeah. When I when I, I when I've seen when when I've seen others give that feedback, when I've seen others having received or heard that others have received that feedback, or when those words are even said to me, I just I go after it because right. it's it's such a funny thing to say. What does that even mean? Right. Or I've had leaders, um, you know, who who were very high up in, in an organization give me feedback without knowing who I am right as a person right like you know just based on like one interaction and I think as as an individual right like as a human being you have to decide am I am I taking that am I not taking that and not knowing if it's really impactful because you really want to do a good job right like you're there to add value and without those Without that without the analytics behind it, it's like how do you know? Mm -hmm. um, and um, I just feel like it always kind of felt like a development was like a guess, right? And it shouldn't be a guess. Um, I mean, you can go different places, and you may not end up where you thought you were going to end up. Um, but at least if you knew what you really wanted to work on and what really mattered, um, I just felt like that's why this framework was so powerful. Um, because it could help me do that and it could help me guide others. And um, I, I just, I think that's always something that I've yearned for, like in, in this growth. Um, it creates, it create it creates the sense of knowing, right? Knowing what it looks like, knowing how to, 
understand whether or not you're there. It, it, it gets you past these kooky phrases around more executive, you know, kind of presence. So those are some of the, my favorite things that you said. And um, I want to also summarize some of the things that Mel has said, because one of the things that she threatened to do today was to do bust out some um, Janet Jackson moves around control. <laughs> yeah. Now, I don't, I can't remember for sure, but where, what, what album did control come from? Was it Rhythm Nation? That sounds like that's uh, I think it might have been before Rhythm Nation. I think it was before oh, Rhythm Nation. Oh, okay. I think I don't know. I'd have to look it up. I'm a big Janet Jackson fan. I know. Oh, I yeah. said I don't have the militant uniform to be able to do the. You oh know. my gosh! Yeah. yeah. Well, but here, but this, these, these are. This is one of the things that I'm that I'm that I that my favorites are about what you know Mel talks about. It's not. It's not just the positive framing on control right because control is this beautiful muscle right working in rhythm um, in order to accomplish something important to an individual um, uh, to accomplish something important to a team to accomplish something important to you know a people a, 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 a community and that to me is what Mel you are on the verge of is control and a sense of rhythm nation, you know, around what modern leadership is actually bringing to you, you know, as this builder oriented um, leader. So um, we are, we are actually um, out, we're, we're actually over time, but we're going to, we're going to uh, uh, wrap this up today. We are going to continue to bring these deeply experienced, beautiful um, women leaders to the Rajui 45 program to kind of take us through not only what they're learning about their own leadership journeys, but um, um, what enticed them and what they're learning about the transition from um, old ways of command and control leadership and how we talked about that to the new geography called modern leadership. And we're gonna get to in future programs what these experienced um, uh, business leaders are starting to learn about how it helps them create and influence the kind of impact that's important to them as a builder leader, as a builder girl, right? As a fixer leader, as a, as a fixer girl. So um, stay with us because again, a living journal and the whole idea is we don't want just a handful of modern leadership practitioners in the world today. We literally need tens and hundreds of thousands of practitioners um, in the um, in the, of modern leadership practitioners in the world today. Because I think no one, every everyone feels it. The need for moving to these models of living centricity, right, of paying attention to all growing and living things, people and leaders and business all at the same time is actually what we have to do to create this, these healthy environments, these healthy communities that we all uh, want to live and grow in every day. Nicole and Mel, thank you so much for being willing to be part of this um, living, um, this living journal. Um, I just can't, I, I'm so happy that um, our paths have not only crossed, but our paths have become aligned and that we're on this, we're in the water. Like I, I even myself, I, I don't think that I'm fully on the new geography yet, but I see us all in transition over there. Thank you for getting into the water with me. Thank you for being in the water with me. I can't wait to see what we learn together. I can't wait to see what we can do together. Thank you. Thank you. Great conversation. Um, everyone, thank you for um, being here today um, with us and for watching our recordings and for watching the reels that are produced because of it. Um, Rejuvi 45, the Community for Modern Leadership, will be back um, the first week of May. And I'm looking really close to see what our next session actually is. And um, I'm, for, I'm like, oh, I forgot to write that down. But we will be back. Um, we'll be back um, the first week of May. Uh, on Thursday at two o'clock Eastern to go over that uh, that next topic with us. Um, thank you uh, for listening. Um, if you like what you hear, like us. And the next time you come back or the next time you listen to something, bring a friend. 
Um, we will talk to you later. Thank you.